Greetings, and welcome to this week's Lesson Extra. At what point in learning the piano does instrument selection become important? So it's always important, so day one. But the standard does get higher as the student progresses. So let's start on what you should never purchase or acquire for your beginner student or for yourself as a beginner. Stay away from the free pianos on Facebook groups or the free pianos being given away at a yard sale. We all have heard the phrase, if it's too good to be true, it is. And that's exactly the case. Those pianos, most of them have been stored in a garage where the heat has permanently destroyed the soundboard or the strings are just so brittle they cannot, cannot be tuned. And so what you're doing is you're setting up yourself or your child for failure when you give them that to work on, especially if the black keys are broken off. I've seen that before, or the pedals don't work. And then the piano is impossible to tune. So the, the child, when they're practicing, they're thinking that those notes are normal when they're not. And then it just sounds so bad. Why would, why would this kid want to learn how to play piano? Why would you want to learn how to play piano if that's what you're practicing on? So there are so many reasons, but when it comes to those instruments, that's firewood, not an instrument, not something to be practiced on, not something to play, firewood. Uh, kind of um, along the same point is antique pianos. So pianos do get better for a while and for quite a while, like the strings will stretch out over time in a good way and this, the piano just comes into its own. Uh, I've heard once that you can really depend on a piano for about 45 years and then after that it starts to uh, uh, degrade, the quality starts to degrade. If it's over 100 years old, mm, I, it might be a beautiful work of art and it might look great in your living room and I, I don't judge you for that, but it's still not going to sound good, it's not going to tune completely. There are a lot of older pianos that tuners won't even touch. Piano tuners won't touch because they're so hard to get into as it is. So just like those free pianos on Facebook, do not acquire an antique piano and think that because it's an antique, it's even better. A lot of those antique pianos are not functional instruments. And then the last one, and I, I wouldn't even bring this up if I hadn't seen it before because I feel like this is such a common sense thing. But toy pianos, like pianos made for toddlers, like little grand pianos that are, you know, so tiny, uh, your kid can't learn off of that. Or like the little keyboard that you would buy in the, the, the toddler toy aisle, your kid can't learn off of that. So make sure that they get an actual keyboard or an actual piano, specific or preferably with 88 keys although you can get less keys in the beginning but you, if you do that you're going to have to upgrade quickly okay so now we've gone over what not to do let's talk about strategies moving forward i am going to begin this part with a caveat there are teachers that i know love and respect that will not accept students if they are playing on a keyboard they will only accept students if they have an acoustic piano um, I disagree with them very strongly, but I get where they're coming from and I will explain the argument behind that. My, my argument is uh, if that you have that standard, then you're going to get a lot of kids with broken pianos from Facebook. <laughs> so that is not my standard. And I really think that technology has come a long way. So let's get into that. The, my number one recommendation for a beginner, an absolute beginner, is a medium to high quality weighted keyboard with 88 keys. It could be um, just weighted completely across, although if you can get uh, gradual hammer weighted, that's even better Like because it plays more like an acoustic piano. And you are looking for something that will play as close to what an acoustic piano plays, like in the hands, the action, the way the keys push against the fingers, you want it as close to what an acoustic piano feels like as you can possibly get. Some of the reasons why I recommend a keyboard over a piano for beginners is A, you never need to tune it. A lot of that stuff, parents 
they'll get neglectful and they'll just keep putting it off month after month after month, especially because tunings, you know, where I live, uh, tuning is around $200. So if you have to tune it once a year, that's an extra $200 fee, which, you know, is not awful, but it, it's fun to spend $200 on other things. <laughs> so a lot of parents will put it off and the piano will go, quality of sound goes down and maybe they don't hear it that well because they're not focused listening, but the child hears it. So that's my one of the my reasons. Another one is the kids can wear headphones. And this is a godsend in so many ways because say there's a lot of kids or uh, a parent works from home, that piano is gonna get annoying as a student practices, especially because a lot of practice is repetitions. And if you have a young child that's starting off, if they find a song that they love, they're going to play that song for you 10 million times. I have heard of students just playing Ode de Joy over and over and over again. And guess what? Ode de Joy is like within the first three months of, of lessons. So you, you gotta, you're gonna want some peace and that's what the headphones are for. On top of that, if your child's a little more shy and doesn't really want to experiment in front of family members that might tease them for their mistakes, headphones offer safety. So I like the idea of students being able to put on headphones while they practice. There's also tons of creative options in practicing with like different sounds. There's a lot of fun stuff on a keyboard that you can layer, like record one track and then record another track over it. So you're playing duets with yourself. Um, there's just, you can split the piano so that one hand is playing like strings and the other hand is playing bass guitar uh, sounds. And so that's really fun. And your, your student or yourself might start writing songs and you know, it's good to have that stuff to work with and be creative with. So you have a big palette of sounds that you can work with and I think that that's great. And then my last reason for liking the keyboard over an acoustic piano for an absolute beginner is um, most keyboards you can connect to your computer or your tablet and then you can use apps. And I like to use the Piano Marvel app in my studio, but there's several apps. Uh, for example, there's a notation app that I use with my digital piano, where I just plug in the USB cord into my computer and I play the notes and it notates what I'm playing. So if a student asks uh, to play something that I don't have an arrangement on, I can write an arrangement quickly just by playing it on my piano and, it, and the notes go on notation. And I use a free software for that. So, Technology is amazing. Embrace technology. I really do love a good keyboard for absolute beginners. Now, if you want to go the acoustic piano route, it is your responsibility to make sure that it is tuned, the pedals are in working order, and the action is consistent from top to bottom. Have a piano tuner, a piano technician look at that piano if it's used. Well, even if it's brand new, because there are some... Uh, brands out there that are uh, kind of iffy. So if, when you're buying an acoustic piano, make sure to get a second opinion about it, bring in your own piano technician, have them look at it, make sure that it is worth the money you're going to spend on it. Now, there are a lot of advantages to having an acoustic piano over having a keyboard. Number one, the overall tone sounds nicer in the ears. So there's a resonance on the acoustic piano that you're just not going to get from a keyboard. Well, not from an affordable keyboard. If you if you can splurge and get one of those really nice hybrid keyboard pianos, that's like the best. So good for you. But for the average person, uh, the piano is going to have a nicer sound. If it's a good piano, it's going to have a nicer sound than the keyboard. Um, also, the way the sound evolves from attack to fade is different and you can keep harmonies resonating longer. For example, if you're holding a note down on an acoustic piano and then you play some other notes, that will keep the note that you're holding down, the strings vibrating. And so you can like keep harmonies in the air much longer uh, on an acoustic piano than you can on a digital piano because as soon as you let go or as soon as the fade of the note is over on the digital piano, it doesn't come back when you play other keys. Not unless you have, an, again, an, an extremely, extremely advanced digital piano, which, again, good for you, but that's probably not likely. <laughs> uh, the action is also more reactive on the fingers. Most keyboards are a little bit more 
slow on the fingers, whereas acoustic pianos tend to be just a little bit faster, a little more reactive. You can get more like dynamic contrast on the piano, I feel, uh, at least in my experience. Um, I would, if your kid is super serious, maybe at the five year mark and when they're like solidly intermediate, unless they like excelled really fast, but if they're excelling at an average rate and they love it, maybe after five years, consider getting a nice acoustic piano because when you get into that advanced music, it is more satisfying. I have to say, I, uh, I have three instruments. I have a Yamaha CVP 509, that's a Clavinova, um, a, a digital piano. That's what I teach off of. And then I have a keyboard I got for gigs, a uh, Yamaha, all my pianos are Yamaha, uh, a Yamaha P515. And that is like their best keyboard they can, that you can get. It's got wooden keys. It's just, it's fantastic. It's super heavy, but it's really nice. And then I have an acoustic, a Yamaha B3. Um, by the way, Yamaha does not pay me for anything. I just like Yamaha. They are very sturdy pianos. So. I have all three, and I gotta say, when I practice every day, I'm practicing on the acoustic. Uh, every now and then I'll move over to the keyboard because I wanna plug in an app and do some fun stuff, or because I wanna put on some headphones. But most of the time I'm on the acoustic because I just enjoy the sound, I, I enjoy it more. Um, so it is a good idea to upgrade to an acoustic eventually, or start off on an acoustic. Uh, it's not as many options in the beginning, but if you just know your kid's going to love it, maybe just take the leap and start with a nice quality acoustic. Again, no yard sale pianos. Uh, and then let's just get into some recommendations real quick. Like I said, I love Yamaha. All my instruments are Yamaha. My favorite keyboard, it's the one I recommend to every student coming to the studio that says, what keyboard should I get? It's a Yamaha P125. Now that that keyboard, along with uh, you know the stand, the pedal, the bench, it's going to run you about eight hundred dollars. So it's not cheap. So my second option is the Alesis A L E S I S Recital eighty eight key digital piano keyboard. It's it's good. It'll last you two maybe three years, and uh, it, it's just it's sturdy and reliable. It's not as good as the Yamaha, but it, it's it's pretty good and it's so much cheaper. It's like under three hundred bucks. But keep in mind, don't just buy the keyboard. You also need to buy a piano stand, and make sure you have you get a stand that either is going to not rock back and forth with the keyboard. You know, kids get excited. You don't want them to push their keyboard over or you know have a plan to have it like sturdily against the wall um, and then a piano bench is very important a chair is not going to be good enough they won't be able to sit correctly uh, and get a good quality damper pedal that's the it's the pedal on the right uh, if you're on a piano but you can buy uh, pedals to plug into your keyboard that is just a damper pedal make sure it's not a box pedal that looks like just a plastic box it should look like a piano pedal so that they could, a student can learn how to pedal properly. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you are interested in fun, convenient, and life-changing piano lessons from the comfort of your home, please visit my website, thebuddingpianist.com. From there, you can find, sign up for a free 30-minute Piano Meister class. This is a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute lesson in which you will learn how to navigate the keys and play a song in your first lesson. Growing through the joy of music.